I'm in my bathroom. I'm getting ready for the day. And um, I was going through this palette. I had bought in this. I think it was at Rite Aid. Could have been CVS. I think it was when my husband and I went to go see Jeff Dunham live in concert. And I had forgotten a bunch of my makeup. So he took me to the store. I ended up buying this palette. It's the, the Blushed Nudes by Maybelline. And I really like the colors because it ranged between like pinks and grays and browns. And I really like the white color too um, because I always put like a base white color on there. But I was trying out the grays today and they're not gray. They're like brownish. They're like taupe or brown. So just I, I just figured I would like give you guys a warning like if you guys want to try this because I think that right now it's on Ibotta. Or it was recently on Ibotta, and in case you like stumble across it, just know that these grays aren't really gray, they're more like brown. Okay, well I'm going to go ahead and finish up my makeup, and then I'll meet you guys back here when I get to my kitchen. Okay, good morning guys. So I'm going to go ahead and make myself some breakfast. I'm still somewhat sticking to this uh, gluten-free diet. I still have some just egg in my fridge, so I think I'm going to go ahead and use it up because I don't want to waste it. On this diet that I was on, it took me a minute to get used to it because you're trying new things and doing stuff like that, but it is possible to find food that you really like. But also keep in mind that if you do have a lot of food on your list that you want to eliminate on this 30 day journey, you don't have to do it all at once. I tried to do it all at once to begin with and it was a lot harder than I expected it to be. I really thought that I could do it. but. I just had a long list of foods that I couldn't eat and so I decided to take it one step at a time. After my second day, I decided that I was just going to eliminate the foods that were on my moderate list and most of the foods that were on the high side of the low intensity list. So that's where I started and I'm going to go ahead and make myself breakfast. And while I'm making my breakfast, I want to show you guys that this is the pan that I used to make my breakfast with my mom thought that the pan that I was using was much bigger and she was like wow that's a lot of food this is a six inch pan this is what I use for breakfast this is like an eight inch pan this is what you would use for like dinner I still really love using this just crack an egg I think that these are so convenient and so easy to put together so what I do is I just take the veggies that came with it I know that sounded a little weird veggies not veggies um, I think this is pork sausage Yes, pork sausage, because I'm not allowed to use any chicken or turkey in my diet. Well, I wasn't able to, so I stuck with pork, and it came with cheese, and I didn't ever use it. I used to tear it off, and I would put it in my refrigerator, and I would save it for another meal to make for my kids or my husband. And I'm just going to add some sliced mushroom to bulk it up a little bit, because mushrooms are full of antioxidants. So I love to put mushrooms any in any dish that I can, and usually it's in my breakfast or my lunch, because during dinner time, my kids and my husband do not like mushrooms. So I can't really have this during dinner time unless I make it separately for myself. So while that's cooking, I just want to show you a little bit about this dress egg. I know I mentioned this a lot in my video and I've even made meals on there. I had a short video. I have did this in a gluten-free eat what I eat in a day. Just so that you guys are aware of what dress egg is, it's a plant-based scramble. You can't make like a fried egg out of this kind of thing. But it has um, eight servings in here which seems like not very much for this little tiny bottle. You do get about eight eggs. So every single time I make this, I make about one and a half to two eggs per serving. And it is 70 calories for three tablespoons. It has five grams of fat, zero saturated fat, 160 grams of sodium, one gram of carbs, and it has zero sugars and six grams of protein. So it's very similar to an egg as far as the, the nutrients goes. Eggs have about the same calories and the same protein and I believe the same amount of fat as well. And if you're interested in what the ingredients are, it has water, mung, mung bean protein, canola oil, dehydrated onion, whatever gallon gum is, I don't know, carrot extracts, um, natural flavors, turmeric extracts, potassium, citrate, salt, a little bit of sugar, tapioca syrup, and a couple of other ingredients that I can't really read. That kind of worries me just a little bit, but for the most part, like the first main ingredients are pretty healthy. So I'm not too worried about what's in here. And the taste is pretty good. Look at that color. It can be very similar to eating egg if you cook it right, if you cook it slow and let it do its thing. If you try to fuss with it too much, it will start to break apart and it won't have that egg-like texture. And so the last thing that I'm gonna put in here because I love to have cheese on my eggs, I'm gonna put this Daya cheddar style shreds in there. This actually tastes better when it's melted. 80 calories for a quarter cup. 
It's made with tapioca flour, and so, so far so good. I actually really like this. So I just put a little bit on top, and I kind of let it just do its thing and melt up a little bit. It'll, it won't melt exactly like cheese, but it will get that melty consistency. And this is the finished product. I'm just gonna add a little bit of Cholula. I actually really like spicier salsa than this, but I've noticed that my body can't handle hot sauce like I used to. I used to be able to eat chilies raw. And I served it with two slices of gluten-free toast. This is my breakfast. The reason why I decided to go on this journey, I'm at the age of 39 years old and I'm starting to feel the effects of aging and my body doesn't digest foods as well as it used to in my early 20s and being that I have hypothyroid disease and have been overweight my entire life, it's getting harder for me to keep the weight off. One thing I never mentioned was that I was taking these supplements called Napa's a little over a year ago. I discovered them through a friend and I was weary about taking them because I'm not really much of a person who takes weight loss supplements. This was not a weight loss supplement. This was just a nutritional supplement that was supposed to help with digestion, mood, um, bloat, and all kinds of other good stuff. And so I was taking them and they worked really well for me. It helped me lose 10 pounds that I wasn't really expecting um, and I was able to keep it off for the entire year that I was using them and I really liked how they made me feel every day. After six weeks of adjustment taking them, my moods had lifted, less irritability, less anxiety, I had less not being able to communicate properly without stumbling on my words or losing train of thought and stuff like that. So I really enjoyed taking them, but then after a year of taking them every day, my body started rejecting them. So I would get these really major cramps in my stomach, in my lower belly, and it would feel like there was a knife being pushed into my stomach every day, all day long, and I was running to the toilet, and it just wasn't fun. I didn't have a normal bowel movement ever. It was it went on going like that for a good two weeks. It was hurting me so badly, so I finally had to stop taking them. And once I did stop taking them, all of my symptoms that I was experiencing before taking them had started to return. I gained 10 pounds. I also started noticing that I couldn't speak clearly. I couldn't think clearly. Uh, my anxiety was through the roof. So I was trying to find other supplements to source what I couldn't get from those Napas anymore, and nothing that I was using was working. And so, that's why I stumbled across this uh, sensitivity test and I decided to give it a go. It was to help me decrease the blow and feel more comfortable in my body, improve mental health, reduce rosacea or acne, hoping that I would somehow be able to do that, and improve my irritability and my mood swings. So I gave up gluten, um, specifically wheat. I gave up eggs and chicken and milk and dairy. So let's go ahead and go through the next four weeks and I documented everything that I was feeling on this 30 day journey. The first thing that I did was go grocery shopping so that I was well stocked and so that I could easily prepare foods without thinking too much about it. I stocked up on everything gluten free from flour to pancake mix to snacks and granola bars. It did take longer to go through the store and look at all the labels and figure out what was gluten free and what I could and couldn't eat. But after that, I was able to take a mental note for the next time that I went. I also supplemented a lot of dairy for dairy free options such as almond and coconut yogurt or milk, lots of oats, veggies, beef and seafood as well. So this was essentially a good starter pack and I didn't have to repurchase a lot of this stuff afterwards and mainly just focused on fresh fruit and veggies on my next shopping trips. And with all of this shopping, I was able to make some incredible meals. I'm on day two of my elimination diet from my Everly Wild Food Sensitivity Comprehensive Test. And I'm also eliminating foods that might have an effect on my thyroid as well. 
and so far so good the only thing that I might feel is a little tired because I'm also not having any caffeine and um, I feel less bloated my face looks clear oh so I'm already feeling good the bloating in my stomach is already down um, not dramatically but I don't have that feeling like that heavy stuffed feeling in my stomach anymore so so far so good um, I can't wait to see what happens in the next week good morning guys I decided to come and sit out here today because I feel like I need some vitamin D I was gonna eat my breakfast out here but my patio is kind of dirty it has a lot of dirt from uh, the wind and stuff we had like three days of wind so yeah there's dirt everywhere even on the table so I'm just sitting out here for a few minutes and I figured since I'm here I might as well do an update I just began my second week today um, I started on May 23rd it is June 1st and I thought that I would give you guys a pretty good update because a lot has happened within this first week there's a lot of good things and a lot of things that are like a little weird but I know it's just part of the process the bloating has gone down a lot I don't feel heavy in my tummy area as much. I did um, go plant-based on some things, which was the Just Egg, and I guess you can call the gluten-free a plant-based because essentially it's made out of rice, which is plant, right? So because of that, um, I'm, I've added a lot of extra fiber into my diet that my body's not used to handling. I don't have the stomach pains. I don't have um, that gurgling feeling in my stomach, that lethargic feeling in my body. I don't feel tired as much. I, I actually am amazed on how much I have improved on energy levels. I usually, when I would lay down after dinner, I could fall asleep by six or seven o'clock. And now I'm like staying up until like nine. And that's unusual for me. Um, I still get pretty tired by then, but that's like a two and a half hour difference, like six o'clock I'll be falling asleep on the couch by 6.30 and then now I can stay awake all the way until I go to bed and actually like get a good night's rest. So I've also noticed that the feeling in my head is a lot different. I don't, my eyes don't feel as tired anymore and I'm guessing that's because I'm not drinking as much caffeine. But the irritability has increased a little bit and I'm wondering if it's because I decreased the sugars in my diet. I did bloat for a minute there. I was bloated for like a good four days while I was detoxing all of the gluten from my diet. My rosacea flared up. It's just now starting to calm down and it was a lot easier to calm it down. I think that my body is just on an adjustment thing right now. It's just, it's learning this new routine and it doesn't know what to do with itself yet. That mind fog is now gone. So I'm looking forward to the next two weeks or so or three weeks or so and seeing what's going to happen in those 30 days. We'll check back in in another couple of weeks and see where I'm at. Hi guys, so it is June 13th. Um, I have about nine days left of this food elimination diet and my workouts have improved a lot. I've noticed that my durability and my strength has increased. Doing body weight exercises is a lot easier. I'm able to carry my own body weight a lot better, especially when I'm doing planks or if I'm doing cardio. Um, it's still difficult, not as easy as it was before, but definitely a lot better than it was. I've even been able to increase my weights by I went from 8 pounds to 10 to 15 and now I'm even starting to incorporate 20 pounds into my diet, I mean into my workout and that's working out pretty well. I've noticed a little bit of definition in my body. I've noticed that my waist is narrowing out a little bit. Did I say that right? Narrowing out a little bit. I've noticed that my shoulders are getting stronger. My arms are slimming out a tiny bit. I, I can tell that gluten has had a major impact in my body and now that I've eliminated it from my diet, I've noticed a big change. So I'm gonna continue with the gluten thing even after the 30 days are over. I am not doing this diet 100% correctly. I am not like purposely cheating on this diet, but I've accidentally consumed things that have gluten in it without even thinking about it. Um, I've accidentally even consumed things that had dairy in it not thinking about it. Not a lot, not, a, not really much to make a difference, but I've, I've noticed that I've accidentally done it and it didn't do anything. It didn't set me back or anything like that. The rosacea has not changed. Um, it has improved, but it's still there. My, my nose is always red. 
I still get flare-ups here and there, but it, it seems to heal a lot faster than it used to, which is different for me. Usually it takes a long time for my rosacea to heal. Now it's getting a lot better. So I, I there is a difference, it's just not a big difference. My moods are different, um, my my memory is a lot better. Not the memory, the, um, the brain fog, like the ability, my cognitive skills are a lot better. The, my ability to speak freely has gotten better. I don't stumble on my words as much. I still stumble on them, but not as much. My cravings are not as bad. I've, I've noticed that my cravings have gotten a lot better. I feel like my face has thinned out a lot. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll check back in in another nine days or so. Okay, so I finally made it to my 30-day journey. My last day was yesterday. Today is June 22nd. And my God, that was a pretty big journey for 30 days. My rosacea or my acne has not improved, so I know that gluten, um, dairy, and uh, gluten, dairy, and eggs, chicken, none of that has anything to do with my acne or rosacea, so I'm gonna have to figure something out else out for that, so I'm gonna go on another elimination diet after this is over. But as far as everything else, I feel pretty good. I have lost Let's see, three pounds now. I went from 175 to 172, and I lost about a half an inch around the waist. It's all just water weight, and so now I'm starting to feel like more myself. I'm starting to feel so much better. And uh, yeah, I'll get back to you guys when the time comes. Okay, so I'm back in my bathroom because I feel like I get the most privacy here, and I don't have to worry about my kids making too much noise while I'm out there. But I figured I would end this video with a little bit of a discussion in regards to what I encountered in these last 30 days. One of the points that I really want to make is that I just want you to know that there are other ways that you could help figure things out. And also, it's a good way to be intuitive about your own body and listen to your body cues and figure out on your own what you're actually feeling. Because I know that in the past, I have had issues trying to figure out what it is that I'm feeling. I've had thoughts that I couldn't compute, and then you look back and you're like, oh wow, like I didn't even notice that that's what I was going through at the time. I've been overweight since I was eight years old. I've been bullied and picked on by so many people, and I've dealt with a mild case of body dysmorphia, and I'm still struggling with body dysmorphia because of years of being told that you're ugly or you're fat or being told that you'd be so much prettier if you would have lost 50 pounds. And I did go on and I lost 50 pounds. I never felt any closure on what I went through as a child and all the things that was said to me by peers, by strangers at the gym. Those kind of people really have an effect on your mind and it's important for you to figure out yourself and love yourself for who you are and be comfortable in the body that you were given and you need to learn how to accept who you are before you try to lose weight or try to fit into that size jeans that you've been wanting to fit in. Your happiness starts here. It starts in your mind and until you can make yourself in your mind feel happy, you will not feel great in your body at any size. So I've been on a diet my entire life trying to make myself happy. I tried to lose weight by doing all these fad diets and I was only doing it to help please other people so that they wouldn't look at me in, in disgust. At this point in my life, I'm just trying to figure out what's gonna make me happy and what's gonna make me healthy because that's ultimately the most important thing for me so that I can live a long and healthy life so I can be around my kids and see them grow up and have kids of their own and graduate and get married and do all these things that uh, we want to see our kids achieve. That's why I'm here for you guys. That's why I decided to do this and that's why I'm documenting it on YouTube. My husband, in the beginning of this journey, he didn't understand all the things that I had to give up in order for me to figure out what was happening and what was causing all of these symptoms. And because I no longer was having that coffee date with him on the weekends because we don't get to see each other in the mornings because he leaves fairly early he didn't get to have that moment with me where we got to set we got to sit and drink coffee together and he missed that and so because he missed that he thought that i felt deprived and not once that i feel deprived because when i went into this i went into this with motivation of wanting to feel better mentally and spiritually and emotionally and even physically but um, I never once felt deprived. He thought I felt deprived and I would go to a friend's house and I was on this gluten-free diet and I was trying not to eat chicken and I was trying to not eat eggs and I was trying to figure out all these things that I could 
order from the restaurant and it cost a little bit of extra of our time and so they felt the same way like why are you on this diet why are you depriving yourself why are you this and that it had nothing to do with deprivation it had nothing to do with that and so the one thing that you need to let your friends or your family or your husband your spouse whoever know that you're on this journey for you and you're doing this to help with whatever it is that you're going through and that you're doing it for a purpose and that they shouldn't feel sorry for you and they shouldn't worry about you and that um, eventually you're going to get your life back the way it was but it's always going to be different from here and out because you're going to find out things that you wanted to know and that you needed to know so that you can make changes to feel better and I think that once they get used to that and they start realizing that you're a happier person and you feel better in your own skin and you're showing your confidence, they're going to be so much more understanding of that and they're going to take that into consideration and they're going to let go of all of that feeling that they had before. But I do want to stress out, stress the point that you don't want to start off too hard. Don't give yourself too much to think about. Don't give yourself too much to give up. Especially if you're someone like me who deals with anxiety, you want to start off slowly. And like I said, I went in this with the intention of going all in and eliminating all the foods. But after a few days, I started realizing that it was just too much. And instead of giving up on this whole journey, I decided to just break it down and do it in baby steps. And I think that is so important with whatever journey you're on, whether you're on a weight loss journey for health reasons, whether you're on a on a quest to figure out who you are. Don't go too fast and too hard because you will burn out and it would be too hard to complete and then you'll give up on yourself. I know that my journey is far from over. I know that this is just the beginning and I am so happy with that. I have learned so much these last 30 days and I never realized how much motivation that I actually had. So much willpower that I had. Even when I was dieting and I lost 50 pounds, and in the first two years, I lost 40, and then after having two other pregnancies, I lost another 10, and I was able to keep it off for so long. I never realized how much willpower I actually had at that time. I was just going along with whatever I was doing. I was doing what everyone else was doing and doing whatever else someone, someone else was telling me. This time, I feel like I was telling myself what to do, and it empowered me. It made me feel so much better about what I am doing and I was able to stick with it. It just empowered me to keep continue going. I finished these 30 days and even though I went straight on to my uh, anniversary weekend, we went straight to San Diego like two days after my 30 days was up and I did give in and I did have some pasta. I had a half an avocado toast. I was playing around with some of the gluten options. I played around with some chicken. And even though I didn't eat a whole lot, and I don't know if it's because I like did too much all at once, which you weren't supposed to do, that wasn't the purpose of this whole journey, you were supposed to incorporate it one at a time, but I was on vacation and I was going to enjoy my vacation and not worry so much about it, but I do think that the gluten that I was eating, like the pasta and the bread, and I even had a bite of a donut, I think it was like a little, like, um, the donut hole, I was feeling so miserable. I think that it was a good thing that I did that because it was a reminder to myself that I needed to stay on track. So this whole week since I've been back, I went back to eating like I was, but I was still incorporating a couple of other things back into my diet. Like dairy doesn't, didn't really have an effect on me. I feel like dairy, um, I can eat in small amounts. So I'm going to incorporate Greek yogurt and um, my fair life and ditch the almond milk because honestly... It didn't satisfy my taste or my cravings. As far as gluten goes, I'm pretty sure that gluten is something that I want to stay away from as far as like the big stuff like pasta or bread, but I'm not going to worry so much about it with whatever's in like salad dressings or even a, like a granola bar or something like that because I don't think that it really had that much of an effect on me. Eggs and chicken, I definitely have gotten so used to eating fish and beef that even though I miss the chicken, I don't need to have it as much as I was eating before. And maybe that's why I was experiencing some of the bloating symptoms too, is because I was eating too much chicken. Maybe it was too hard for my body to break down chicken and eggs too. Am I going to eat the just egg for the rest of my life? No. But on the weekends when we go out to lunch or breakfast, I'm not going to worry about finding a, a vegan meal or um, an eggless breakfast. I think that I will 
be able to figure all of that out as time goes. And at this point in my life, I think I figured it out. I think that gluten is the main source of all of my issues and I'm going to continue on with that and I want to move further with all of the other foods that I think might have an effect on my acne and rosacea which is all the foods that have histamine in them. I'm still going to play around with stuff like that but I have noticed that my rosacea is getting better even though I don't know if this diet had anything to do with it. I think that the rosacea might have something to do with the stress that I was putting on my body. Um, now that I'm not as stressed as I was and I feel a little bit more alive if you will, I think that my rosacea is going to start to improve and I'm only going to go further from there. I'm so grateful for stumbling across this food sensitivity test and I think that it really did help. Even though it didn't give me all the answers I was looking for in 30 days, which I already said I know that my journey is not over. I still have to continue working on myself and figuring out things that is make, going to make me feel good and workouts and all that kind of stuff comes along with that. I think that if I would have never found this test and I would have never done my research and I would have never went through this whole journey, I don't think I would have ever gotten the answers I was looking for. So yes, I do think that this food sensitivity test was way worth the money and I would recommend it to anybody who is interested in doing it and is looking for answers that you can't find elsewhere. And even though I'm not focused on weight loss at this time, I'm just going to continue enjoying my life feeling great about myself in whatever body that was given to me and stop worrying so much about how other people view me and look at me. I think that I am going to just continue working on my mental health and figuring out ways to love myself, period. I hope that this helps you in any way. If you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out in my channel. I know that a lot of people aren't really looking at these videos right now, but maybe down the line, maybe you guys might find it and you might find it interesting. And if you do find it interesting and you have any questions or you have anything to help me create content, that would be appreciative too as well. And yeah, I think that's all I have for you guys. I bless all of you. I hope you guys are all doing amazing and you guys are living and loving life. Stay safe. I love you guys and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.